Move on then, and let's talk to the management of Cyan DLM. Well, the numbers look pretty good on the top line. Margins were a little bit uh, under pressure. To understand what's the outlook from year on, we have Mr. Srinivas Kulkarni, the Chief Financial Officer at Cyan DLM, who joins us on the show. Uh, hi, good morning, Mr. Kulkarni, and good to see you in. Well, last year was good, last quarter as well was good in terms of growth. And I understand that you're guiding for around 30% revenue growth for FY25 and the next couple of years as well. Give us a few more details. You're also saying that margins will start improving from year on because of the various measures that you all are taking and some of those one-offs will be out of the way. What is the margin guidance? And also ROCE, you're talking about 15% and 25% in the next few years. What are the levers in place out there? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to talk to you today. Uh, so we had a good quarter. Uh, I think uh, we had a, we, on a, from a full year perspective, we had a growth of in excess of 40%. And uh, this is what we had expected at the beginning of the year when we did our roadshow earlier for the IPO, and which, which is what the expectation that was set for the market. Uh, the growth outlook uh, uh, continues to look strong in this industry. As you know, EMS as a whole, uh, you know, is growing 30% uh, in India. I think we are slated to grow from 16 billion to about 60 billion from 21 to 26, and we are reaping the benefits of the same, right? Uh, as far as margins are concerned, uh, uh, margins have improved this quarter. We, we we were targeting to get to about double digit by the end of the year, which we have. Uh, now, um, uh, the, the margins tend to be a little low in, in the uh, EMS industry, but, it's, but we are operating a little bit under our potential because of some conscious investments we've made in SG and the, for the growth that we see. Uh, and uh, yes, you're right, we do expect a 30% growth in the next three years in CAGR terms. But if you had to give us a margin guidance, uh, then what would it be? You're in double digits, so should we work with around 10, 11%? And ROC as well, you were going to tell us about uh, the levers that you have in place to take it higher. Yeah, I mean, the margins will uh, improve from where we are currently uh, on a full year basis, uh, right? We, we, we have certain levers uh, for, the, for the margins in terms of, you know, better absorptions coming from the growth itself. Our SGA is optimized today. I don't think we will further invest in, uh, in, in, in the indirect costs at this point in time. Uh, with respect to the ROC, we are currently operating around 11% and we ho hope to get to about 15% in the short run and about 25% in a steady state. Uh, I mean, the basic levers are, you know, as you deploy the, you know, the capital properly, I think that there's better returns coming out of uh, the, the, in a bit form for us as a company. I want to talk a little more about your order book, uh, Mr. Kulkarni, because, you know, that is down year on year since the last three quarters. I understand that your order book currently is at somewhere around 2200-odd crores. Um, you have explained that this is perhaps because of the lumpiness in the order book, the pressure. But can you tell me over the next couple of quarters, how are you seeing orders shape up? What is uh, the order visibility over the next 12 to 18 months? Yeah, the order book uh, will definitely improve in the coming quarters. Uh, we are okay. we are working on several large pipelines uh, and opportunities which are likely to get converted in the coming quarters. Right, I, I, and the lumpiness is there. I think some of these orders for for two years. So till as you consume the orders, you will see the uh, net order book going down. But then you will also get a large order at the end of that tenure. So some of that plays in as well. But from the just the uh, sales pipeline perspective, we're very confident of growing our order book in the coming quarters. Okay, so you're confident of growing your order book in the coming quarters. Um, can you tell us? You know, you have a ramp up as well, right, of your two new facilities. Uh, how much will that add once the uh, expansions get completed, both in terms of revenues, in terms of better operational performance? Uh, if you can just take us through that. Sure. Uh, from a capacity perspective, we are quite optimal right now. I think we have, we have, in fact, we have excess capacity. We can even grow to double our current size without having to add anything more. The two uh, facilities that are added are uh, very, for very specific needs. One is the machining facility in uh, Bangalore. Uh, we, we had a facility there, but we moved to a larger place. And given the sort of box build orders that we are seeing in the pipeline and the, and the precision mechanics orders that we are seeing. The other facility is just to declutter the existing plant. I think Mysore capaci uh, the capacity is quite high and, and uh, we are also seeing increased business from cable wire harness which needs a little higher real estate, right? More, more white space, so to speak. So, so these, are, these expansions are in line with that. Uh, but our current capacity with the two expanded uh, capacity can take us to about 300 350 dollars a million dollars without having to add anything further mm. 
<coughs> Mr. Kulkarni, uh, hi, good morning. Uh, just to go back to uh, the order book, right? Uh, what's the pipeline, if you can give us a number? Yeah, the pipeline is in excess of a billion dollars right now, what we're chasing, right, in terms of opportunities. Of course, uh, the, uh, in EMS, you should also re realize that the sales cycles tend to be quite long, right? I think from the time we uh, start an engagement with a new client uh, till you get a meaningful first order, it, it's probably one year, right? So uh, there are several opportunities in the pipeline. Uh, we, we are talking to a number of key clients of ours, and we hope to convert some of them uh, in the coming quarters. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there any, uh, uh, I mean, so as uh, I think there was a note from Kotak, uh, the analyst was pointing out that orders have fallen for, the book has fallen for about seven quarters straight. Uh, so, uh, you know, the it's is it, uh, do you have the sort of visibility that you are going to back some of these orders? Because the current order book as it stands right now doesn't give too much visibility beyond F525. Uh, so while the pipeline is strong, I mean, can you do uh, anything else to convert or this is just uh, in the course of business? As you explained, the cycle is long. No, it's uh, in the course of the business. As, as long as we convert some of these orders in the first half of FI25, I think we are then well set for 26 as well, other than 25 itself. Right? And uh, yeah, I mean, uh, we read the report. Uh, look, there are six coverages today for us and the range uh, it is quite, quite a but in, within those uh, reports, so, you know, uh, I mean, uh, I guess everybody is entitled to their opinion, but we see how the business is. Uh, we are quite confident from where we are. Sorry, what was that, sir? Uh, I, I didn't quite get it. You said there were six? Uh, no, there are six, six coverages for uh, Sain, Dale and Prashant. So, the, okay. the, the, the guidance is from 550 rupees, uh, which is Kotak, I think, to 1,000. Oh, I see, I see. So you mean the, pr the price target? Right? Okay. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And the okay, sales. Okay. Got it. Got it. I mean, of course, it's a range of opinion as always, uh, and and uh, that's what sort of analysts. But it takes a whole lot of opinion to make the market, uh, and that's the beauty Perfect. of it. Nigel. Okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, let's focus back on the business aspects. Then, Mr. Kulkarni, if I got that correct, you said that you can potentially double your revenues if uh, there is demand with the current gross block. Is that correct? So you can do around two thousand five hundred crores on a per annum basis. From the capacity perspective, Nigel, we, we yeah, have enough capacity. capacity. No, I'm, I'm referring to the potential. The potential is to double revenues with the current investments. Did we get that correct? Absolutely. Okay, got it. A couple of more factors then. You know, exports mm -hmm. are, I think, two-thirds of your total business. And there have been some tensions in Israel as well. Has that hampered business to any extent, point number one? And do you see a risk to exports? No, that that is not hampered. Actually, we are we were quite uh, pleased with the resilience that country has shown in terms of we have both the uh, import and export dependency on Israel, and none of that has uh, actually adversely impacted at all, right? Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, the other other aspect of this is the defense business is growing, so it's also a manifestation of what's going on uh, around the world today, right? So we do uh, we do see uh, you know the, the, the there's no impact basically of that situation. Okay. You said the defense business is growing, right? Can you tell us what exactly is the mix uh, in the to in total sales? How much uh, comes from defense right now? How much do you expect it to grow? What's the kind of order visibility that you have there? Yeah, I think uh, aerospace and defense makes up to almost 70% of our business today. right? And, uh, uh, and, and that, that, that's the segment where we are seeing the fastest growth. Look, from our perspective, ideally, we want all the four industries to be around 25%. That de-risks us. But uh, even, even from a pipeline and where we are seeing the opportunities, much of the traction is in aerospace and defense, and we will obviously cash, cash on that one. But uh, there is also enough focus on medtech and industrial. We want to, we have dedicated sales force there to sort of target those markets. So we should start seeing an improvement in that mix going forward. Okay, all right. Uh... Final question then before we let you go, uh, Mr. Kulkarni, since it's the final one, I'll squeeze in two. Uh, networking capital days, you're expecting some improvement out there. So what level should we work with? Uh, you know, if you could uh, help us out with that number. And also in the first quarter, you're talking about getting uh, an order. What could that rough quantum of that order be? No, I will not be able to specify that order, Najib. But on the, on the networking capital, we, we want to be at around 90 days uh, on an average, right? I think we can always get in, uh, uh, get the networking capital at any given point in time to that number. But you should operate at that average for the year. And that's when it makes a difference to the free cash flow. And uh, we are we are on course to get there. We have few levers we are working on, especially on the supply chain front, to bring down the inventory days, etc. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Kulkarni, uh, there is a <clears throat> imminent acquisition. 
There, there are conversations ongoing at this point in time. Uh, I think we are we are pleased with the progress. Uh, we will definitely uh, come back and announce as, as and when we have something tangible to talk about. In the mm. in the first half of F five twenty five. Yes. Yes. That's right. And uh, I mean, a large one. Uh, what kind? I mean, just to uh, broadly give us a sense, ballpark. No, there are a few conversations there in, in the range. See, our sweet spot would be between a fifty to hundred million dollars, right? I think if something is in that size, it would uh, all, all go well. The criteria for us to acquire is to sort of enhance capabilities, get some geographic expansion because some of our clients are outside of India and they prefer proximity, etc. And those are the real drivers uh, to so on for us to sort of make that. So, so this is uh, a company based out of the US. I will not be able to specify that. But outside India, it is definitely outside India. Yes. All right, Mr. Kulkarni, we'll leave it there. Thank you very much uh, for joining us. Uh, good, uh, good conversation, and uh, you know, hope to speak with you uh, soon again as you sort of uh, uh, get some of those uh, orders that you're talking about. Order pipeline is healthy, a billion dollars, and uh, confident that uh, you know you'll convert many of those into orders, and of course, maintaining a healthy growth guidance uh, on the top line as well. The stocks on your screen. Uh, this is, of course, the pre-open stocks opened up about five and a half percent, seven hundred twenty-five. Let's just quickly take a.